So thanks for joining me again on this video. Um, here I'm going to be shooting off the uh, ladder load tests that uh, we created in the last video. I've just shot off the five uh, fouling um, loads. I'll maybe shoot another five just to be safe and then get into it. So I have my target down there. You can maybe just see it in the distance. A uh, little white dot down there. That's uh, exactly 100 meters away and firing over the uh, Millennium Chronograph. So, um, wind today is not too bad. Seems to be gusting between about sort of three and seven miles an hour when I was checking earlier. But the direction is just about six o'clock, 6.30, something like that. So hopefully it won't affect the results too much. Let's see how we go. So that's all the group shot now. Um, one thing, this old CED Millennium chronograph I fired 60 shots through it, and as you can see here, it's registered all 60. It might be old, it's probably 20 years old now going by the name, um, but incredibly reliable. So I'll put the gun on cooldown, take the bolt with me, and we're going to have a look at the target. And here we go. So it doesn't look too bad. I don't care about the group size really within this test. It's all about velocities. So I'll go and take some pictures and I'll see you back in front of the computer. To calculate group sizes and point of impact offsets, I use a program called Ballistic X, which is available for the iPhone and Android. Here I'm using it on a Mac as it's easier to record for this video. A very quick overview. Take a picture of the target on your phone, preferably using a program which corrects for perspective errors. Choose it and set an established known distance on the target. Here I'm using two inches. Set the target shooting distance and the caliber used. Set your point of aim mark. And then enter each of your bullet holes. Add the overlay to the target with all the statistics. Crop it down. And then simply repeat for all of your other targets. I then take this data along with all the chronograph data and import it into an Excel model that I've built. I use Excel because I want my results to be data driven. Facts beat opinions all day, every day. However, making sense of 90 data points, just looking at numbers alone, is almost impossible. Excel allows us to visualise this. Although this sheet looks fairly complex at first glance, it's actually very easy. Simply enter the test and purpose, your velocities, and the groupings and offsets. My model will then graph all of this information and make it easy to consume. So let's look at what we have here. We entered our velocity data from the chronograph in here against each of the loads. So for the 22.0 grain, this was the five shots, 22.2, etc, etc. That's then graphed in the graph directly below it. For the dots here, if you look at these, these are colour coded against the shots. So the purple ones here are all shot number one, the uh, blue ones are shot number two, etc. The white line, again colour coded, is the average velocity for the five shots in each group. 
So as you can see, the velocity continues to climb as we add more powder, as we would expect. The yellow line is the standard deviation for the five shots for each powder charge. The graph in the middle here represents the grouping and offset data. So again, color coded, the white line represents the group size in MOA. The green line represents the elevation offset in inches, and the red line represents the windage offset in inches. It's quite easy to be swayed by your own opinion of looking at the groups when analysing data. So I set up at the top here a small panel to remind me of what works. My first priority is I want a low standard deviation in velocity. This is a powder test and we're trying to figure out where the powder is burning most efficiently. The second priority is scatter groups. What I've seen when performing load analysis uh, with 0.2 grain increments on a small caliber like this is generally you will get two good looking groups with two wide groups either side of it. That's a good signal. Third priority is that we have similar group sizes of the two good groups mentioned above. And the fourth priority is to have good velocity, um, especially with a small calibre like this with a low BC bullet that can be heavily affected by the wind. We, we want some good speed out of the gun. So starting with that priority, low standard deviation. If we look at the yellow line here, we can see that the standard deviation at the low charge weights is all over the place and then begins to drop and stabilize as we get to loads five, six, seven, and eight. Centered around load seven here, we've got a very good standard deviation indeed of 7.7, .7, an extreme spread of 19. So let's have a look at the grouping and offsets for that load. What's happening there? Low size group was load eight. At 23.4 grains with a 0.365 MOE group. Uh, beyond that, it goes up again. If we go below that, we've got a nice group at load 7 here as well. And load 6 again goes up. So this is signalling to me we've got two good groups here. And if we look at uh, either side, we've got what I would call a scatter group. Let's have a look at those targets. I've highlighted the four interesting powder charges identified in the Excel data. 23.4 grain had the best group. 23.2 grain has the lowest standard deviation and still a good group. And the groups either side are definitely scatter groups. So it seems we have met priority one and priority two. Back to the Excel. Priority is a similar group center point of impact for the two interesting charge weights which was load 7 and load 8. The elevation offset, the vertical offset, is slightly larger than I would like at 0 0.017 of an inch but the horizontal windage offset is pretty much spot on so I'll call that good. My fourth priority is velocity. If we look again at the two interesting charge weights, load 7 and load 8, we can see that the average between them is 29, 19 feet per second, which seems very good. And of course, this is within the manufacturer's data and there's no pressure signs on the brass or primers. So my decision here is to go between the two. I'm going to choose 23.3 grain as my ideal powder charge to take to the next step in the load build process, the seating depth test. The wind forecast isn't looking great for the next week, but I'll get it done as soon as conditions allow and get the next video up.
Thank you for watching. I hope it was at least mildly interesting. Parts 1 and 2 of this video, if you haven't seen them, will be linked in the YouTube description. Until next time.